Welcome guys, this is Automotive Anonymous and that's a 2024 Subaru Forester Premium in the color called Crystal White Pearl and in person, even on an overcast day, it looks fantastic. But if you haven't heard, there's a new generation of Subaru Forester coming for 2025. So this 24 model year is the last generation of the fifth generation of the Forester. And there's a lot that we need to talk about to decide if you need to spring on the opportunity to find one of these while you still can, or if the next generation might actually be better rather than a setback. So we're gonna do a walk around, go through the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 on my GPS, and then final thoughts to help you decide what do you do with the 2024 Subaru Premium Forester? Do you buy it or leave it at the lot? Big thanks to Twin Falls Subaru for letting me borrow theirs for the day. And if you're new here, I personally own Subarus. I've owned a Crosstrek and now an Outback Wilderness for over two years each. I've driven over 70,000 miles of Subarus, including test driving dozens of new ones on my channel. So I have a lot to share with you guys, so let's dive right in. And by the time you're watching this video, I should already have a video up about my thoughts of the next generation Forester in comparison to this one if you're interested in checking that video out next. Otherwise, if you're new to the Forester in general, they started back in 1997. The fifth generation started in 2019, so this is the sixth and final year of the sixth generation of the Forester. Interestingly enough, there's also six trim levels of it. A base model starts as little as 27,000 bucks before destination and any extra goodies that you want to spec it on. And then the most loaded model, which is the Touring, starts about $37,000 before its destination and goodies. But this premium is the second lowest trim level, and honestly, it might be the best value overall because these start at about $30,000. And then the way this one is spec with its extra options, you can see here it's about $33,000. So when you're considering a Forester Premium, what you get is the 10-way power driver seat, the Subaru Starlink safety and security features, push button start with keyless access, which is a really nice feature to leave your keys in the pocket. And then you have the ginormic panoramic power moonroof, which is optioned as standard on all Foresters other than the base model. You get these 17-inch alloy wheels, and then if you want, the way this one is spec it has the available power rear lift gate. If you already own a Forester or you're considering one, you really should be quite thankful that Subaru still has these assembled in Japan because I think most of us know that Japanese assembled vehicles, quite frankly, are better put together on average than the United States counterparts. And they're pretty popular, even though it's a global platform. In America, in North America, this sells up to 180,000 units in its best year, but the last finalized year, was 114,000, that was in 2022. So the Honda CRV or the Toyota RAV4 outsell this two to three to one, depending on the model year. But this seriously is underrated. It has more features for less money than those, and it has a far superior all wheel drive system as the biggest differences between these very safe and efficient crossover vehicles. This is a top safety pick plus. Even the base model comes standard with these LED headlights. And as you can see here on the screen, there's a whole host of other adaptive, passive, and active safety features to help you avoid accidents. But because it's additionally a five-star crash test rated vehicle, you're gonna be pretty well off if you unfortunately ever were in an accident. I hope you aren't. But I think Subaru really puts a lot of money into the safety of their vehicles. S in Subaru stands for S in safety because if you happen to get into an accident, likely from someone else's fault. That way you're gonna survive and you're gonna buy another Subaru and you're gonna be grateful for how it did its job in protecting you. It is starting to get quite cold out. It's about 40 degrees currently and we could expect snow in this area anytime now. Subarus do phenomenally in the snow. I can't wait to show you a lot of footage of my own Outback Wilderness playing in the snow this fall and winter. So look forward to that. But if this video so far is bringing any value to you, please consider liking it. That small act of kindness really goes a long way. These are honestly quite pleasant to drive, especially around town with their compact size. This is about 15 feet long, six feet wide, and five and a half feet tall. The wheelbase is just under nine feet at 8.75 of a foot. And then it can do a full circle in 35 feet, so they really do feel quite agile on the road and almost a little bit sporty for being more off-road focused with its suspension. It weighs roughly 3,500 pounds. And then the payload capacity, which is how much you can carry between people and cargo, that's 900 pounds. And then this even has 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which is standard. That's basically the same as a lot of full-size trucks that aren't the off-road versions. 
And then it has a 370 final drive ratio and with the tow package it can tow up to 1500 pounds whereas the Forester Wilderness can tow up to 3000 pounds. Lastly out here the gas tanks located on the passenger side which is typical of most Subarus. When the vehicle's locked so it's the gas door no one's gonna be siphoning your fuel but when you unlock it so is the gas door. So that's a nice little feature. It takes 87 octane. It's a 16.6 gallon tank rated at roughly 26 city, 33 highway, meaning your max road trip and range is about 550 miles. And then it has a 225, 60, 17 wheel and tire. It's a Bridgestone all season. The tread depth doesn't look excessive, but it's pretty average for an, a new car. And then this one again has access, keyless access. So with the proximity key, you can lock and lock, do the power lift gate on this one, how it's spec and then the panic button. But in general, just leave that in your pocket because you can lock and unlock the vehicle with the proximity key features. The driver's side door panel looks really good. There's contrasting dark and light materials. The door card is soft touch. The armrest is soft touch. You have about an 11 finger handle right there. All of your switches, your buttons, your lunar moon landing surface, Rockford Fosgate, speakers, bottle holders, some snacks, and then a baby size Subaru right there. The all weather mats are not installed yet. Rubberized pedals, hood release, fuse box. The way this premium spec, it actually has quite a few options. Chirp reset, lighting stock, 10 way power adjusted cloth seat, which is actually heated and quite comfortable with the giant panel roof up top. The Forester really shines bright on the interior. It's very human centric. Oftentimes Japanese built cars just seem like they're built around the driver. It's really easy to find a comfortable position in here. The wheel moves and telescopes. It's easy to adjust as well as the seat. You have plenty of leg room at five foot 11. I can't complain. And you can see that there's safety features basically throughout. You have adaptive cruise settings on the right of the wheel, voice and volume controls on the left. The horn actually sounds pretty good for a Forester. Pretty loud, a little bit high pitched, but quite loud. And when you fired right up, the needles dance. The steering responsive headlights, if they were to come on right now, they're just set on auto, so it didn't feel the need to put them on, but they do a little theatrical display. And then the leather wrapped wheel feels good, although I do wish it was heated. And then to go through your settings, the paddles down here go through the center. And then the info button goes through the upper display. So there's a lot of good features that this can show you. This is just the miniature six and a half inch screen. And guys, what the heck? There's no more CD player on the 2024 Forester. That is quite unfortunate. I wouldn't be surprised if you can have that option in the center console like you can on other Subarus, but you shouldn't have to lose that much space when it fits perfectly right there. And I wish they would have just included that. Otherwise, I honestly like this six and a half inch screen or the eight inch upgraded screen on the Forester way more than the 11.6 inch screen on all the other Subarus. And honestly, that's what one of the biggest expectation is with the new generation and a big reason to buy this one because losing the physical controls and HVAC and all that into the slow and responsive screen sucks. I honestly don't like that screen on my own Outback, but that's enough for that rant. Anyways, you have some USBs, aux, 12 volt, rubberized area. The backup camera, small, but actually pretty clear for this size of screen. Excuse the film over it, kind of adding some glare to it. And then you have electronic parking brake, auto vehicle hold, stage one X mode, traction off if you turn it to the left, heated seats, no front facing camera. And then you have cup holders, a CD tray for the CD player you don't have, 12 volt, small center console. And then you have the compass, the garage door openers, dimming mirrors, which really is a good feature. I do think that that is worth the 500 roughly bucks that they ask for this option for the fancy mirror. And then you have the sliding power moonroof. You have your sunglass holder. You have lighting. You can pull this off, but it doesn't slide because it extends. And anyways, let's hop out, turn it off, and we'll go in the back. The rear door panel follows all the same theme and design language. This is the 40 split, the 60 split is on the other side. You can see it doesn't quite lay flat with the back, but what's cool is it does recline with that little strap right there. And then sitting behind myself at five foot 11, without the seat reclined, I still have a few inches in front of my knees, double map pocket with the pan flits. I have plugins, no heated seats, armrests with some cup holders, and a fantastic view with a lot of lighting. It's almost like the fishbowl effect. I would recommend you get your windows tinted up front, like the Backcomb factory, but 
this is a really nice place to be. The back of this Generation Forester, especially in the crystal white pearl color, I actually think looks really good with how the refresh was done a couple years ago. But there's four ways to access the back. Push the button that's on the dashboard. Climb through the back seats. Push the button underneath the Subaru emblem or use the remote. But before we do, I wanna show you, there's a pin code button down here. I have a video on how to set that. It lets you get into your car without having the keys on you or within range. It opens pretty well and you can see it doesn't get too high above the roof, but be aware of the height difference for when you're in your garage. Otherwise back here, you have about 29 cubic feet of room. When you drop the seats, you have about 74. So it's pretty impressive, but it is wide, it is tall. So unless you're really stacking stuff on top of each other, just be aware that it's not as useful of space as the 75 cubic feet that's in a longer Subaru Outback. Otherwise you have some bag clips, tie downs, 12 volt little tie downs around the corners, a little bit of room behind the wheel well on both sides. And then you have the temporary spare tire underneath here with your tools and a little bit more storage. What are you gonna hide under there? Comment that below. Otherwise, it's easy to lower. But before we do, look, there's some more bag clips right there. At least that's what I would use them for. Nothing new on the passenger rear. Door panel looks the same. Really nice soft touch materials. I do think they're gonna age pretty well. Double mat pockets. This is the 60 split, easy to lift and lower with child safety tethers on the back. And let's move on to the front. Proximity key features again for the front shotgun seat rider. Slightly bigger door panel. Rockford Fosgate advertised. Baby size Subaru on the door still. But you only have manual adjustments. My backpack's okay with that though. And then the cloth mats again aren't installed yet. No storage on the transmission tunnel or above the glove box like the Outback has. It is locking though with the key hidden in your remote. And then it's kind of small and there's also no 12 volt like the Legacy and the Outback have. But let's come around to the front. I'm gonna pop the hood and I'm gonna show you what the two and a half liter little boxer engine looks like. Under the hood is a very easily fitted two and a half liter boxer that's just nice and neat in there. There's a lot of room around it, but it makes 182 peak horse at about 5,600 RPM and about 176 foot pound feet of twisty torque at 4,400 RPM. Induction through the grill, through the box, it's hidden underneath the engine cover, but you can see the upper intake manifold runners, the alternator, the serpentine belt, the wheel dipstick, top mount oil filter, all of your reservoirs, the battery. Honestly, these are really well engineered engines and the modern Subaru Boxers are quite reliable. It's connected to an eight speed CVT and let's drop the hood, take it for a drive. This is my favorite part. We're gonna time travel and teleport to one of my favorite roads. I'll show you how it drives and then we'll do the zero to 60 and I'll meet back here for my final thoughts. Initial driving impressions of the 24 Forester Premium. So that's really good. I've driven like a dozen of these and I love them. Visibility is fantastic. Look how big those windows are. Side mirrors do well. Rear view mirror equally because the vehicle's only about 15 feet long. It gets up to speed pretty well if you're not trying to pass people on the highway or race anybody. It does well with 182 horsepower. It's a little bit colder out today, 43 degrees, the computer reads. So we're making a little bit more horsepower than I usually make at this altitude, but we're still down on power about 10%. How does it do passing? It's okay, it's definitely a few seconds slower to 60, as you'll see pretty soon, than a Turbo Outback or Legacy is. But it's comfortable, it's convenient, it's easy to find a nice position to drive in. The back seats are huge. The power moonroof is phenomenal. I wish more Subaru models had a nearly panoramic moonroof. And then comfort for the seats is pretty well. Don't take a corner too fast because they're bolstered for comfort, not to hold you in when you're autocrossing your Forester around, which not very many people would do. Although there are some heavily modified Subaru Foresters online with turbo mods and engine swaps, but the backpack's having a good time. The heated seats work okay in this, but they don't get as hot as other brands, other manufacturers. Mazda specifically can get really warm. And then the Rockford Fosgate system in here, I feel like is what these should come with factory. I don't feel like it's, you know, thankfully it's not too expensive of an upgrade. It's not as bad as the Harman Kardon system in price but I feel like this should be the standard speakers because the regular ones do sound a tiny bit washed out. These sound acceptable and the HKs sound a little bit better, but 
there's always better options in the aftermarket. Otherwise, where is the CD player? We have the fancy line, but we don't have a CD player. Brakes work pretty well at about a third of a pedal. And if you're going 20 miles an hour and a deer pops out from the brush and you gotta change direction, it is pretty good. I can't complain too much about that. Anyways, guys, the Forester is a fun ride. It feels like it gives you confidence driving it. You have almost nine foot wheelbase for a 15 foot long vehicle overall. The road noise and wind noise really isn't that bad, especially with these Bridgestone tires. It gets up to speed decently. This thing seems to shine at about a half pedal. When you give it full throttle, you realize there's really not a whole lot more in the tank than what half pedal acceleration gives you. But it's safe. It has a bunch of safety features. And they work pretty well overall. But let's get to the private road. I'll show you how fast it actually is. Zero to 60 at almost 4,000 feet of elevation. And then we'll get to my final thoughts afterwards. Zero to 60, traction's off, sport mode is on, I'll break rev the CVT. True density altitude's 3,400 feet, so this vehicle's down on power, about 10%. Let's see what it can do. And true zero to 60 came in at 8.98. It's pretty impressive for these to break under nine seconds. My final thoughts of the 2024 Subaru Forester, specifically the premium, is I think it's a really good value. For about 33 grand, you're getting a safer and more economical car than the average vehicle on the road. It also has a better all-wheel drive system and more ground clearance than the average vehicle, while costing roughly $15,000 less. I know averages are skewed, but there's not much that's average about the Subaru Forester. I think it's a phenomenal vehicle. Again, if you haven't already checked out my other video on my thoughts of the new generation, check that out. Cause now is the time to decide if you're considering a Subaru, if you're considering a Forester, which I strongly recommend you check out the other competition, the other brands, make sure that you're doing the best decision for you. But then if you are gonna decide on this, consider what's better, the 2024 or the beginning of the 2025s. Honestly, this being the sixth year of this vehicle and that we know that it was obviously built in Japan, it's gonna be really reliable, really refined. A lot of the details are worked out. And then the refreshed front end, the facelift that this got a couple years ago, just makes it a really good looking vehicle. Whereas the new generation may have some recalls, may have some flaws that have to get worked out. So it's gonna be hit or miss potentially, but I guess we'll see what happens and only time can tell. If you like my video, if you found any benefit from it, please consider liking it. If you wanna watch more, subscribe. I always post at least once a week and I really hope to see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care, see ya.